Hey everyone, I'm Olivia Thompson. Before I dive into my story, please like and subscribe to the channel. Trust me, you're going to want to hear this wild ride. I'm 32, killing it as a marketing executive and raising my awesome eight-year-old son, Ethan, in our cozy suburban home. Life was pretty sweet, you know? Just me and my little man against the world. But then, my older sister, Samantha, hit a rough patch. It all started with a phone call. Liv, I don't know what to do. Samantha's voice cracked over the line. Derek lost his job, and we can't make rent. We're going to be out on the street with the baby. Now, I'm not going to lie. I hesitated for a hot second. But hey, family's family, right? So I told her, Sam, why don't you guys come stay with us for a bit, just until you get back on your feet? The first few weeks were actually pretty great. Samantha and I stayed up late, giggling over glasses of wine and reminiscing about our childhood shenanigans. Remember when we snuck out to that concert? She'd laugh, and I'd shoot back, Yeah, and Dad grounded us for a month. Ethan was over the moon about having his baby cousin around. He'd toddle after her, shaking rattles and making silly faces. Mom, can I feed her? He'd ask, eyes wide with excitement. It was adorable, really. But then things started to... shift. It was subtle at first. Samantha would make little comments here and there. Oh, you're letting Ethan have soda? I thought you were all about healthy eating, she'd say with this little smirk. I brushed it off initially, but the comments kept coming. Liv, don't you think it's time to repaint the living room? This color is so last season. Or, I can't believe you're still using that old vacuum. No wonder the carpets never look clean. Meanwhile, her husband Derek. Well, let's just say he wasn't exactly employee of the month material. The guy would park himself on my couch from dawn till dusk, controller in hand, yelling at the TV. Babe. Can you grab me a beer? He'd holler at Samantha, not even looking up from his game. One night, after a particularly long day at work, I came home to find dishes piled high in the sink and toys scattered everywhere. Samantha was sprawled on the couch scrolling through her phone. Hey, Sam, I said, trying to keep my cool. I thought we agreed to share the housework. She looked up, rolling her eyes. Ugh, Liv, I've been busy with the baby all day. Can't you just do it? It's your house, after all. I bit my tongue, hard. This wasn't the sister I knew. Where was the Samantha who used to have my back no matter what? As the weeks turned into months, the tension in the house became palpable. Ethan started to withdraw, spending more time in his room. Mom, he whispered one night as I tucked him in. When are Aunt Sam and Uncle Derek leaving? I stroked his hair, my heart heavy. Soon, sweetie, soon. But even as I said it, I wasn't sure I believed it anymore. What had started as a temporary arrangement was beginning to feel unsettlingly permanent. And as I lay in bed that night staring at the ceiling, I couldn't shake the feeling that I'd made a terrible mistake. Little did I know things were about to get so much worse. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. It started small my favorite lipstick vanishing, then my gold hoop earrings. I chalked it up to stress, figuring I'd misplaced them. But then Ethan came to me, his big brown eyes brimming with tears. Mom, I can't find Rex anywhere, he sniffled, referring to his beloved stuffed dinosaur. I frowned, helping him search. When did you last see him, sweetie? I left him on my bed this morning, but now he's gone. We turned the house upside down, but Rex was nowhere to be found. I couldn't help but notice Samantha watching us with an odd expression. Maybe you should teach the kid to keep better track of his toys, she remarked, her tone oddly cold. The next day I got off work early, hoping to surprise Ethan with ice cream. Instead, I walked in to find Samantha strutting around in my favorite dress, her face caked in my high-end makeup. What the hell, Sam? I blurted out, shocked. She whirled around, caught red-handed. Oh, come on, Liv, it's just clothes. Why are you being so selfish? Selfish? You're wearing my things without asking. God, you're so ungrateful, she spat. After everything we've done for you. Done for me? I interrupted, incredulous. You're living in my house, rent-free. 
Yeah, and babysitting your kid. You should be thanking us. I was about to retort when I heard Derek's voice from the other room. Babe, keep it down. She wasn't supposed to be home yet. A chill ran down my spine. What were they up to? That night, after Ethan was asleep, I crept downstairs for a glass of water. I froze when I heard hushed voices from the guest room. We've been here long enough, Derek was saying. If we stay a few more weeks, we can claim squatter's rights. Are you sure? Samantha whispered back. What about Liv? Who cares? It'll be our house then. We can kick her out if we want. I slipped back upstairs, my mind reeling. They were planning to steal my home. The next day I called in sick and spent the morning installing hidden cameras in the common areas. I felt guilty, but I needed evidence. Over the next week I watched Ethan grow more withdrawn. He'd flinch when Derek raised his voice and avoid Samantha altogether. Honey, is everything okay with Aunt Sam and Uncle Derek? I asked gently. He shrugged, not meeting my eyes. They're just... mean sometimes. I hugged him tight, fury building in my chest. This had to end. Friday afternoon, I got stuck in a meeting that ran late. By the time I got home, the sun had set. I unlocked the door, calling out, Ethan? I'm home. No answer. The house was eerily quiet. I climbed the stairs, a sense of dread growing with each step. I pushed open my bedroom door and froze. My room was... gone. In its place was a pastel paradise of baby furniture. A crib stood where my bed used to be. A changing table had replaced my vanity. And there in the center of it all stood Samantha, cooing at her baby in my rocking chair. What? What have you done? I choked out. She looked up, smiling serenely. Oh, hey, Liv. We decided the baby needed more space. Hope you don't mind. We moved your stuff to the garage. I stood there speechless, as the full weight of their betrayal crashed over me. This wasn't just about clothes or toys anymore. They were trying to erase me from my own home. Where's Ethan? I managed to ask, my voice shaking. Samantha shrugged. Derek took him to the park or something. Said the kid was being too noisy. In that moment, I knew. This wasn't going to end well. But I'd be damned if I let them win. I stormed downstairs, my blood boiling. Derek had just walked in with Ethan, and I rounded on them both. What the hell do you two think you're doing? I shouted. You can't just take over my bedroom. Samantha appeared at the top of the stairs, baby on her hip. Oh, don't be so dramatic, Liv. We needed the space. Needed the space? This is my house. Derek stepped forward, his face twisted in a sneer. Look, we've been here for months. We have rights now. Rights? You're guests. Guess I'm starting to regret inviting. Samantha's eyes narrowed. Careful, sis. You wouldn't want child services hearing about how you're trying to put a baby out on the street, would you? I felt like I'd been slapped. You wouldn't dare. Try me, she hissed. I grabbed my phone, hands shaking. Rachel? I need your help. Now. Twenty minutes later, I was pacing my living room, pouring out the whole sordid story to my best friend and lawyer. Olivia, breathe, Rachel said, her voice calm. We'll figure this out. They don't have a leg to stand on legally. We spent the next hour outlining a plan. Emergency eviction notice, restraining order if necessary. I felt a glimmer of hope for the first time in weeks. Mom? Ethan's voice broke through my concentration. I'm hungry. I glanced at the clock, shocked to see how late it had gotten. Of course, sweetie, I'll make you a sandwich. But when I turned back, Ethan was gone. Ethan? I called out. No answer. I searched every room, panic rising with each empty space. Ethan, this isn't funny! Samantha appeared, looking annoyed. What's all the yelling about? I can't find Ethan. Have you seen him? She shrugged, turning away. Not my kid, not my problem. I was about to scream when I heard it. A faint cry coming from... Above? I raced up to the attic, my heart pounding. The door was locked. Ethan, are you in there? Mommy? His voice was muffled, terrified. I yanked at the door, but it wouldn't budge. Hold on, baby, I'm coming! It took me kicking the door three times before it finally gave way. There was Ethan, huddled in the corner, tears streaking his dirty face. I scooped him up, 
holding him tight. It's okay, I've got you. What happened? Between sobs, he managed. Aunt Sam. She said I was being bad. Said I had to stay up here and think about what I'd done. Red clouded my vision. I carried Ethan downstairs, where Samantha and Derek were lounging on the couch. How dare you? I seethed. How dare you lock my son in the attic? Samantha's eyes widened in fake innocence. What? No, it must have been an accident. The door sticks sometimes. Save it, I spat. I've got cameras. I know exactly what you did. For a moment, fear flashed across her face. Then it hardened into defiance. So what? You can't prove anything and we're not going anywhere. I pulled out my phone, dialing Rachel again. We'll see about that. The next 24 hours were a blur of legal paperwork and police visits. Rachel came through with an emergency restraining order and eviction notice. But when the cops showed up to serve it, Samantha and Derek barricaded themselves in the guest room. You'll have to drag us out, Derek yelled through the door. I stood in the hallway, Ethan clinging to my leg, as the police tried to negotiate. This wasn't over, not by a long shot. With Samantha and Derek barricaded in the guest room, I knew I had to think outside the box. I called my boss, explaining the situation. I need to run a campaign on squatters' rights abuse. Trust me, it'll be huge. She hesitated, then agreed. Make it viral, Olivia. I poured everything into that campaign. Social media blitzes, influencer partnerships, even a hashtag that started trending. Hash squatters no rights. All without ever mentioning names, of course. As public outrage grew, I could feel the pressure mounting on Samantha and Derek. The constant police presence didn't hurt either. Finally, after a week of standoff, they cracked. I watched from the window as they loaded their car, Derek cursing under his breath. But something caught my eye. Derek was carrying a laptop I'd never seen before, treating it like it was made of gold. Curious, I snuck into my home office after they left. What I found made my jaw drop. Hidden files, offshore accounts, a whole network of illegal gambling sites. No wonder they didn't want to leave. Derek had been running his operation from my house. I didn't hesitate. One anonymous tip to the cops later and I watched Derek being led away in handcuffs from my front porch. Samantha came running back, baby in arms, tears streaming down her face. Liv, please! I didn't know about the gambling. You have to believe me, I'll lose everything. My home, my baby. Please help me. I looked at her, this woman who used to be my sister. For a moment, I felt a flicker of pity, but then I remembered Ethan's tear-stained face in that attic, and my resolve hardened. You lost me the moment you threatened my son. Goodbye, Samantha. The next few weeks were a whirlwind. Ethan and I threw ourselves into reclaiming our home. New locks, fresh paint, rearranging furniture, anything to erase the memory of those awful months. And that's the end of my story. Now I've got a question for you. If you were in my shoes, would you ever forgive Samantha? Or is some betrayal too deep for second chances? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this wild ride, don't forget to like and subscribe for more real-life drama. Your support means the world to me.